Alright, so you guys will notice I toned down my voice a little bit in this guide, and I'm wondering if you guys like the commentaries to be a little more like this. Usually I get super into these guides, so this commentary wasn't easy to do. But 100% if you guys do like the more chill out vibe, then let me know in the comments below. Now, I won't include the V-Bucks intro into this guide, and I'm debating on just making a lower third like the subscribe thing you see here. So I might be doing that instead of the intro I usually do. Also, the V-Bucks giveaway is still going on, so don't worry. So in this guide, we'll be talking about a few building and baiting and what not to do situations. Anyways guys, let's get into this guide. So in this first example, there was a player that ended up jumping off the top of the tower and he did take fall damage so that wasn't smart of him. Now I boxed myself in as he did that and the key thing you guys want to focus on is adding a ramp in front of your 1x1. The point of adding a ramp in front is for 3 layers of support. If your opponent is shooting at your 1x1, adding that ramp will basically be your wall until you do add a wall, so don't worry about taking extra damage. When you place that ramp, it'll end up going in front of your 1x1 and you'll then place down your wall and then another ramp inside. Unfortunately, I cannot show you guys from a cinematic point because the replay function is still broken in Fortnite. Now, one of the points of adding 3 layers is to allow yourself to edit the roof to build over your opponent or just take shots like I did here. My opponent has his face right in my wall so this doesn't work when your opponent's super close to your fort. As long as he's slightly farther, the ramp will build right over top of him. Alright, so I've shown this building technique in the past before, but what I mean by building over top of your opponent is to edit the roof and build yourself a 2 story 1x1 one one above your opponent. You do this if you need to heal up. You'll have peekers advantage and you have more support to give you the time to heal. Now if you don't need to heal, simply edit the roof and go for a surprise drop onto your opponent. Now, back to the 3 layer support, you can actually use the 3 layer support during a fight too. Let me show you guys a few examples of what I mean. So in this first example, I was getting shot at from a distance and placed down the ramp, wall, ramp in order to heal. He went through my 2 ramps and stopped taking shots. This gave me time to heal because he probably needed to reload and decided to stop taking shots. Here's one more example after finishing off this fight with this player. I heard this player right in behind me and built cover at an instant. And you guys can see I placed down a ramp wall ramp again just so I had a little bit of time to reload my SMG. Overall guys this is a good way of giving you that extra cover. I'll continue this first example because I want to quickly mention a good way of dropping onto your opponents which is by editing the floor. Now I've talked about using this during build battles but you can still use this when your opponent is ground level. Instead of jumping off the edge of the floor edit one of the boxes for a surprise drop down. I do this quite often to throw off the exact spot I'll be dropping from. So, in this next example, I want to talk about what's not a smart thing to do, and that's going around someone's ramps without building cover. You basically have a full on headshot angle on your opponent because they're on the low ground. Here's another example put on some damage onto this opponent and built myself towards him. He then decides to go around as he's running. He can't see me, although I can see his exact pathway. If you ever get shot down, you'll probably be able to get under your opponent's ramps and also shoot it down. Now, remember when your opponent's on the right side of your screen, you've got that peaking advantage like I have in this example. This opponent was much more aggressive compared to the other two, and by using the peaker's advantage, you'll be able to pre-peak your opponent for an easy shot without exposing yourself. Now, this next thing I want to talk about is about another way of baiting your opponent into peeking. Before we get into it, I'm going to start this part a little earlier because before I've told you guys to walk backwards into your bounce trap and you can actually walk straight into it and land on the jump pad just in case you guys are still putting your back into it when hitting the jump pad. Now as I jump padded, I spotted this opponent and eliminated him. Now the second opponent never peeked so I turned my back to him to bait him into shooting. As he shot, I peeked out and took a shot myself. This is very risky but it'll work 100% of the time if you're great at sniping. Here's one more quick example. This player was up on the mountain and he wouldn't peek, so instead of me pushing him, I backed up and turned myself around to take a shot. Now, this is usually the only situation I'd use it in because you're much farther from your opponent and he's gonna try sniping at you from a distance. So, as long as you're good at sniping from a distance, then you'll be able to bait your opponent out every time. Once again, if you utilize this, use it if you're at a distance from your opponent. Well guys, that's it for this guide. Hope it can help some people out. And a like and a sub will be greatly appreciated as it does help me a lot. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day and night and I'll see you on the next one.